first, let's make the basic components of the backpack GUI. Insert a screen GUI into the starter GUI and name it Backpack. Inside the screen GUI, you can insert a frame, but I will insert an image label because I want an image as a frame. I will rename it as frame, however, and set its image property to the image I want the frame to be. For now, we don't have to worry about the frame's position as the script will position it for us, but I'm going to reposition it right now for better visibility later on. Now duplicate the frame and put one inside of the other. Name that one template and set its image property to the slot icon you'd like to display. If you don't have an image or if you just want a background for that icon, customize the background color and transparency of the template. Otherwise, set the transparency equal to 1. Now adjust the template size. How big do you want the backpack icons to be? I'm going to use an X and Y offset of 60. Next, insert a text label into the template, and I will just shorten its name to label. This label will tell that player which key to press for each tool. I'll adjust its size to be 40% of its parent, the template, therefore its X and Y scale values will be 0.4. Now to move the label a bit to the left, I'll change the X scale position of it to negative 0.2, and to move it down some, I'll change the Y scale position to 0.6. Now you can customize the label further by adjusting properties such as background transparency, the font, text color, and the text scaled property. I'll also set the text to 1 just to see how it would look like after the script sets up the icons. Now insert an image button into the template and name it Tool. This is the button that will be clickable and have the image of the tool assigned. I'm going to clear the current image property just because it bothers me, but to make sure, but do make sure to adjust its size and its background transparency. The image of the tool should only be as big as the icon for it, so set its size to 1, 0, 1, 0, which is X and Y scale values of 1. The background transparency of the tool image should also be set to 1. Now let's address the Z index properties of these GUI objects. Set the template's Z index to 2, the tool's Z index to 3, and the label's Z index to 4 so that they stack up in that order. Thanks for watching guys, we're done now. <laughs> okay, never mind. Insert a local script into the backpack, I'll name it manager, and this is where you will type the script I'm about to explain. I'll be moving some more aesthetic though, so I'll be right back so in the first line here we're going to disable the core GUI backpack it would actually be best to disable it through a local script inside of the starter player scripts folder but this will do for the sake of convenience afterwards we'll declare our variables we've got the user input service player character backpack humanoid the frame that all the icons will have as a parent the template for those icons and icon transparencies for when a tool is equipped or unequipped there's also the icon size, which references the template size, and the icon border, which is just the space in pixels that you want in between the icons. Note though that the variable is set equal to an array with two values, x and y. With the way I have it set up, horizontal border will be greater than the vertical one. I like how that looks. We'll also need a dictionary for effective referencing. Its keys are the names of the enum key code that we want to be pressed, and their values include an array which is currently a one item list. The only value in the array, text, represents how that corresponding icon would be labeled as in the GUI. For instance, if we want players to press 8 on the keyboard for a certain tool, we probably want the text on the side of the icon as a number and not 8 spelled out into 5 letters. You'll also see this later, but the text value will be the name we assign to the corresponding icons made from cloning the template. Now this array below the dictionary has pretty much the same content. However, since it's an array, the order that these values are arranged in is saved. Here I've referenced each entry of the dictionary in order that I want the tool icons to be displayed in. So the icon for the tool assigned to one will be placed in the first position and the icon for the tool assigned to zero will be the leftmost icon. Uh, I mean the rightmost icon at the very end. Moving on to the functions, this handle equip function is to run when a player causes a change to the backpack. 
by either pressing a key assigned to a tool slot or clicking on an icon. For the function, we're going to require one parameter, the tool itself. The first if statement will check if the tool even exists inside the tool slot, and the second one inside of it will check for the current placement of the tool. If the tool isn't inside of the character, in other words, if it isn't already equipped, then the tool will be equipped. On the other hand, if the tool is inside the character, then the tool will be unequipped. This next create function will create all the icons for each assigned key in the input order array in order. The variable to show represents the number of keys there are, and note that the number operator is only effective in this case because we're using it with the array input order and not the dictionary input keys. The next variable total x will be the x offset of the frame. The total would be composed of the number of icons times the x offset of each icon, in addition to the number of icons plus one times the icon border. Note that the addition of one is significant because, for example, a frame for five icons would need six spaces total if we want spaces that separate both icons at the end of the frame from the edge. Total Y would then be the Y offset of the frame, including the borders at the top and bottom of the icon itself. Next, we'll actually set the size of the frame with the X offset as a total X variable and the Y offset as a total Y variable. Also, since we want the frame to be centered along the X axis, its scale would be 0.5 and its offset would be the negative half of the total size. And to have the frame on the bottom half of the screen with some space from the edge, the Y scale should be 1, and the Y offset should be set to the negative sum of the icon's height and 2 times the icon border value that we've declared in the variable section. Y times 2? Well, not multiplying it by 2 bothers me visually, but hey, it's your choice. Now we'll use a for loop to go through each entry in input order. Remember, this should create the icons in order, as input order is an array capable of storing the order of values rather than a key and its values. However, I have declared a variable here named value to make indexing the array look less confusing. We have a variable representing a clone made from the template. We'll set its parent to the frame. Set the text value as both the text of the icon's text label and the name of the icon itself. We'll make sure that the icon is visible and set its position using the index of the for loop as a reference. The index of the first icon made will be 1, but we want its x offset to remain at the x value of the icon border, so we'll set the x offset to the index minus 1 times the icon's x offset size plus the index times the fixed icon x border value. Before moving on, we also want to set the icon's image transparency to unequipped by default. Afterwards, we'll check for a tool value in the array of the corresponding key entry. Only if a tool exists for that slot, we'll assign the tool's texture ID to the image of the icon's child tool, the image button. These next lines use the mouse button one down event of the text button tool to detect when the player clicks on the button of a tool to equip or unequip it. Since the keys of the dictionary input keys are the last part of the enum key code reference and not the shortened name that each icon has, We'll have to use a for key comma value in pairs loop to check for which dictionary entry it is with the same text value as the icon name. Once we figure out the corresponding entry, we can run the handle equip tool with one required parameter, the tool which we get from the entry we just found. Be careful in adding the proper ends in your script. Before the last end, the one that closes the create function, we will destroy the template as we no longer need it or want to see it. This next function setup will set up all the tools already in the backpack when the player spawns. Using the getChildren function, we compile all the tools in the backpack, assuming that everything in the backpack is a tool, so please don't put anything other than a tool in the starter pack. This first for loop will go through each tool found, and the second for loop will find the first open tool slot. The phrase not value bracket tool is equivalent to the value bracket tool equals nil, so if a tool for that entry is non-existent, we'll set that tool slot equal to the tool from the backpack that's currently being accommodated, and then we'll break the loop to make it stop looking. Once all the slots are filled up, or once all the tools are accounted for, we'll use a create function to set up all the tool slots. 
By the way, if you guys are looking to allow for the access of additional tools beyond the number of slots available, let me know so that I can make an extension video on it. For the adjust function, we'll loop through all the entries and input keys, and we've declared the variable tool and the entries corresponding icon by searching for the icon in the icon frame with the same name as the entry's text value. If the tool exists, we'll set the image of the image button tool to the tool's texture ID and we'll set the icon's image transparency accordingly to whether or not the tool is equipped. Setting the transparency to equipped will make the icon less transparent than the unequipped transparency, making it more noticeable. Else, if the tool does not exist, then the image of the image button will be cleared and the icon's transparency will be set to unequipped. Now for the on key press function. We'll have an input object parameter that goes with the input began event we will connect it to later on. The key variable is equal to the name of the key code and the value is an attempt to access the input keys dictionary with a potentially invalid key value. However, if the value does indeed exist, if an entry exists in the dictionary with a key code name as a key, and the player isn't typing in a text box, we'll run the handle equip function with the required parameter, which is the tool itself. In the next handle addition function, we have one parameter, a potential tool to be added to the backpack. First, however, we need to make sure that what we're attempting to add is a tool, with a tool as its class name and that it isn't already registered as an object in the backpack. We have the variable new declared as true by default, and we'll loop through the input keys dictionary. If the entry contains a tool, then check if the tool is the adding, which is the object that we're attempting to add. If they match, then set the variable new equal to false. If the new variable is still true, then we'll find that tool the next open slot in the dictionary. If the open slot is found, the script will break. Either way, the adjust function will be called to ensure that the backpack display is up to date. Similarly, the handle removal function will have one parameter, the potential tool to be removed from the backpack. We'll initially verify that removing is a tool if it is indeed a tool and its parent is neither the character nor the backpack, we'll know for sure that the tool must be removed. We'll use a for loop to figure out which entry it is with the tool to be removed, and once we find it, we'll set the tool value of that entry equal to nil. Now here's for the most satisfying part of the script, connecting the events to the functions. We'll connect the input began event of the user input service to the on key press function, and both the child added event and the child removed event of the character should be connected to the handle addition and handle removal functions respectively. The same goes for the backpack. You might be wondering though, what about the parameters? Well, it sends the parameters for you as you directly connect the event to the function. Lastly, we need to call the setup function and then we're done. Oh, and just so you know, if you guys want the backpack to save in your place as well as throughout your game universe, I have a tutorial that helps you with that. It's compatible, just follow the instructions.